Salutations, viewers, welcome, subscribers, and listeners and watchers. And if you're not a subscriber yet, click down below, and don't forget to click like. Today for you, I bring to you something that I got at my local vape shop, Railway City Vapes, here in St. Thomas, Ontario. This is from Joytech. It's the Evic VT. Today, we're going to be reviewing this bad boy. I've been using it for about a week two weeks now, and I tell you, I really like this. I went from using the MVP1, well, it's MVP, which is the highest setting of 5 volts or 11 watts, and I tell you, big step up from that. Maximum of 60 watts, it's also got this brand new temperature control feature on it, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's dive in and do us some unboxing. So here you go, the EVIC VT, and if you look on it, on the cover of the box. It's got it looks like a gold and black EVIC. Now for what I understand they don't make a gold and black although that would be a really nice color too. It's just a variation I think uh, it's supposed to be showing the yellow and black. So let's open her up and see what's inside. So you can see I didn't get the yellow and black. I have got the white and blue, and it's either uh, racing white or dazzling white or something like that they call it. And I tell you, it's a really, really nice paint job. You won't be able to see it too well on the camera, but it's actually got a nice little sparkle in it. I've never even had a car with that nice of a paint job. You can also on the top, they've got the nice stainless along here really really shines up but it also really tracks a lot of fingerprints to it. I can imagine if you had the black one you'd probably see a lot of the fingerprints showing up on it a little easier as well. White doesn't show up as much. Now as I said I've had this for going on a couple weeks now non-stop use. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, let's go over a few of the main things here when you first see it you pull it out of the box, get your button, a nice big screen lights up really well so it's really easy to read no atomizer on it so it's not showing any resistance right now we'll get that ego one mega head out in a minute and we'll check it out now as I said before a few times I've already been using this for a while so the package when you get it it's probably going to be wrapped in cellophane and put together a little more tidy than what you're going to see so we've got this nice little tray that the uh, unit itself sits in. It's like soft felt or velvet or whatever. Nice and fuzzy. You've got your instruction manual with quite a few different languages in it. So here is the tank itself that it comes with. Now this is great because if you were to go out and buy something that just comes as the unit itself, you're going to have to buy a tank separately. That can get pricey. So the whole thing of buying a kit, and I do believe there's quite a few different kits out there. Uh, for me it was either a choice of this or the Subbox Mini Kit from Kangaroo Tech. I like the Evic. I probably would have liked the other as well. But I won't know until I try it. So yes. Here's the tank she comes with. And this takes both the nickel, titanium, and you can get CLR, those rebuildable heads for it. So you can get making your own coils for variable temperature. And when you get this, it's not going to be together like this. The tip's going to be off. It's going to be all separated. Like so. And she'll be bone dry. Whereas mine is not. I've got the nickel head in here right now. You can see the blue band of the nickel head. Not really so much a fan of the titanium, but I might be once I start building my own coils and get into a lower resistance. That'll happen after I get my CLR heads for it. Now, very easy to move airflow. Am I even showing that? Here we go. So that's the Ego 1 mega tank that comes with the kit depending on what color of the evic you get your tank will match set that there and I'll show you 
This is the nickel head. I wonder if I can actually line it up for you to be able to read that. You see that or not? I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to pause it if I can actually get it to show up clear enough. Anyhow, CLR heads from what I understand look just like this. I haven't gotten any yet, so time will tell. Also comes with this nice silicone sleeve. Easily slides in. As I say easily and it doesn't. Leaves a hole open in the bottom to get at that vent. Covers the, well, it doesn't cover the screen, but it covers the button well. Some of them are cut out around the button as well. This one, it's a nice job covering it. You can still hear that button rattle, which I'll get into when we discuss the pros and cons. Otherwise, what you see is what you get. And this is the proper charger for the EVIC. Don't go using something different unless it's a lower amperage. If you try to use something that's a higher voltage or a higher amperage, and you can read it right on the plug. There's no reason not to understand it. If you've made it this far into vaping, you should be able to understand a simple charger rating. Okay, so it comes with the cord, the charger, it's your standard micro USB. And that's what comes with the EVIC kit. Now, I guess the first things first is we'll go over some of the pros and cons. Ah, uh, no, we won't. Not yet. But the main part I wanted you guys to see, I won't take all your booklet fun away, is right here. Your specifications. 5,000 milliamp battery, variable temperature and variable wattage modes. I don't know why I lost my light there. Resistance values. 0.05 to 1 ohm in variable temperature mode and 0.15 to 3 ohm in variable wattage mode. That's the stuff everybody always wants to hear. So when you're doing your own builds in variable temperature mode, if you're putting it in an RDA, if you're putting it in a rebuildable tank, uh, you can get your resistance right down there. Right down to 0.01, I don't know if that's said it, oh, 0.05. That's right. So, the pros. Here we'll go with the pros. Comes with the tank and an extra coil head. So you've got an actual nickel and a titanium head to start you out. Uh, con to that, a negative side to that, is the titanium head's quite a bit higher than the nickel head in resistance. It's a 0.40 in the titanium, or sorry, in the nickels are in a 0.21, I think. Uh, it would have been nice to see them come out around the same level of resistance so you could actually equally compare the two. Other than that, I liked them both. I like the nickel better because it's a lower resistance and that's where that little thing I just explained comes in. The internal battery, 5000 milliamp hour battery or 5000 ma, as some of those cool guys like to say. There has been a little bit of fuss over that whether it was actually 5,000 milliamp or when somebody had taken it apart and misread what was labeled on the battery they label it in watt hours and you have to do a bit of mathematical conversion to find out the amp hours to that and when if you watch Philip Bassardo's video shout out hey Phil uh, he actually goes and takes it apart shows you that goes through the mathematical procedure and shows you that it is definitely 5000 milliamp hour or slightly there over so yes thank you Philip Bacerdo for clearing that up for everybody and reassuring us that yes this is a 5000 milliamp hour battery in here so next on the list of pros easy to use interface and I should have just showed you this before I zoomed back out very very simple to use interface you want to drop it into being able to select mode well first we'll discuss this the jog wheel you turn up and you can turn down you see the wattage just adjusting there okay simply just moving the jog wheel a little bit so what happens if you want to change the mode click it three times 
it gets you into selection mode to the left and it will change where you're selecting so we'll put over into a temperature control mode this is the nickel mode if I'm not mistaken yes I had to look at the screen the nickel mode so we'll get down to adjust the wattage you can adjust it up but you can't go back down or look at that and they make it so you can lock the atomizer but I don't have one on there so I can't lock it so we'll go back to the watts hang on a second and it'll keep going up it'll keep going up and going up until you hit 60 then it'll stop now because you can't jog back while you're in a, that mode there you just keep going over to go back down to 30 and start you all over and you go all the way back up and through again Okay, so then we're down to the battery you can have your battery indicator showing your puff counter or your time and that's like your trigger time your amount of pull time on here so like one two three got it good so we'll back up ah oh, geez yeah so I want to put it back in wattage mode and to get it back out of your selector mode you just hit the fire button and you didn't even see any of that so when you want to get back out of selector mode just hit the fire button I want it in watts mode right now to show you that it jogs up and jogs back down now there's something interesting I really wanted to show everybody here so bear with me. But you're gonna have to wait until I get to the cons because I want to finish going through all the positive points about this first okay so I showed you the easy to use interface the jog wheel on the top kinda makes it a little easier than trying to fuss around with two small buttons and one big button now again the amazing paint job Okay, I feel bad putting it in this silicone sometimes, not just letting that nice paint job shine. Like, it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah, USB charge. I'm a fan of internal batteries. I haven't owned anything with uh, removable batteries yet, so until then I probably will be a fan of internal batteries. Now to the cons, the negatives. First off in this kit, it was missing something that I've seen almost all other kits have. Well, I've seen a lot of different E-Leaf kits, so I'll just say I've seen them in E-Leaf stuff and I'm surprised I didn't find it in the Joytech, is the Ego Adapter. Some of what the equipment that I got when I started was meant to go on an Ego pen. So you can't use it on this, not unless you have that adapter. So that stuff there can only be used on the MVP and you'll see what I mean in another video I'm going to be doing a review on the MVP and I'll cover that topic when we get into that there is actually one important part that I almost completely forgot to put into this and add in so I'm adding it in after editing but post pre-editing whatever there's a, a slight flaw that I would like to point out I don't know if anybody at Joytex is actually going to watch this or not, but something you guys, whoever designed this, totally overlooked. I get using the Hellboy on here, it gets hot. You gotta admit, you gotta turn it right up in the wattage. Everybody likes the high watts. And, well, not everybody, but it heats up. And because it's draining faster, the battery tends to heat up a little bit. What's the first thing you do when this thing gets hot? I better put that down, let it cool down for a minute. Put her down, let her cool down. Well, guess what? You just covered up by putting it down. Yes, the heating vents. The vent to release any kind of heat. Well, if it's got an RDA on top, you're not going to lay it on its side, are you? No, not at all. The only other time it's really going to heat up that you'd want to be making use of any kind of air ventilation is when it's charging. 
You guys know that we're going to be standing it up, right? You're so conscious about it, you put the charger plug in the side, which is good. That's not a complaint. Don't think that it is. But you covered the heat. So maybe if the next round, you guys went all nice, cool, stylish with this hood. It kind of makes me think of a Chevelle hood with the riser in the middle like that, the cowl. So why don't you put some louvers in, like a sports car would have. Put your heat ventilation in. Three louvers, four louvers along each side, either side of the cowl. Just like you would a car. Come on. If we're gonna do it right, let's do it right the first time. If you want my input, get a hold of me. Otherwise, this will be added into the channel and seem like a completely different part of the video. Hope you enjoyed this part. Back to the regular part of the review. So yeah, there's no ego adapter. The button, don't know if you can hear that too well. One second. I'm just tapping it, lightly. It's a noisy button. It makes me concerned that someday this might become an issue, but so far there's been no auto fire and no sticky button. I've heard a few other people say this and I'll have to agree that it should have been a higher wattage for watt mode. It should be able to go up to at least 100. I'm alright with 60 for now, but a little bit of extra watts never hurts. And the last thing that I could point out, second last thing actually, is there's no temperature control mode for Canthal. Now I'm still new into this whole vape game, but is there devices that have temperature control for Canthal? Is that a possibility? Could it be an update if these are upgradable, the software, to be able to run Canthal on temperature control? So the very, very last point that I wanted to show, and I want to know if anybody else has noticed this or picked up on it yet, has to do with temperature control. I've got it in nickel mode right now, and I'll show you my temperature. 530 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, 40 watts, 0.21 ohm resistance. When I start hauling, you watch where that where the wattage goes. Why have it selectable? Why say it only does between 30 and 60 watts if this is what you get? Okay, we'll do it one more time. Maybe I'll be able to see it happen this time too. That is definitely not 40 watts. It was down to 20, even down in the teens. Okay. Let me drop down to my watt setting. We're going to turn this up. Going, 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 going. Goes a little faster. 60 watts. Okay, ready? Watch where the watts go while it's actually working. Temperature protection kicks in a lot and drops that watt down to maybe third of what I've set it to why is that somebody wants to take the time comment in the comment section below and try and explain that if it's supposed to do that why even have it so we can adjust the wattage why not just give us the temperature I'm sure it's kind of neat it's kind of handy but I've never seen the watts above 30 for a selection range of 30 to 60 watts it just doesn't make sense. But there you go. The Joyvic, Joyvic, Joytech Evic VT. Available at most local vape, vape shops. You go to joytech.com. Uh, personally, I'm a big supporter of shopping locally. Because if you don't shop at them stores, you're going to have nothing but the selection of Walmart. And you'll never see vaporizing gear. I haven't seen vape gear in Walmart yet. And I really hope I never do. It should be something kept local. Or by the companies producing the gear to be sold by the local. Anyhow, enough rambling on for me. 
This has been another Random Andrew review. Technically the first Random Andrew review. If there's anything else you guys would like to see me do better, if there's anything else I haven't covered, feel free to add it to the comments section below and I'll do another video regarding that specific information needed. So, have a great day. Don't forget to click like. No, for you to be down here. Click like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And remember, much safer, much healthier for you. You can add years to your life by giving up the cigarettes. This is the crap people used to tell me before I quit smoking, but now I've quit smoking and I can say it to you guys too. Why smoke a cigarette?